In this topic, we will discuss the HSDPA network architecture and highlight the changes required to UMTS R99 architecture and explain the enhancements required in the UE, Node B, and RNC in order to support HSDPA. Here is a simplified view of the UMTS architecture. UTRAN stands for UMTS Terrestrial Radio Access Network, and it provides a radio interface with the UE. CSCN, or Circuit Switch Core Network, provides connectivity with the Public Switch Telephone Network, or PSTN. The overall communication path includes the UE, UTRAN, CSCN, PSTN, and the landline phone. PSCN, or Packet Switch Core Network, connects the user with the Internet. The overall communication path includes the UE, UTRAN, PSCN, Internet, and the WWW server when the user is downloading a web page. Let's take a closer look at the UTRAN. The UTRAN consists of one or more RNSs, or radio network subsystems. One RNS includes one RNC and multiple node Bs controlled by the RNC. The IUB is the interface between the node B and the RNC and is used to carry user traffic and messages. The UU is the radio interface between the node B and the UE and it provides wireless mobility to the user. The IUR is the interface between two RNCs and it helps to maintain the call as the user travels from one RNS to another. The IU is the interface between the UTRAN and the core network and is primarily used to carry user traffic and some signaling messages. HSDPA does not introduce any new network element to the UMTS Release 99 architecture. One of the main goals of HSDPA is to reuse the existing network. Since HSDPA is primarily a radio access solution, most of the changes are made in the UTRAN. In other words, the Node B and RNC require significant enhancements. The CSCN remains the same and the PSCN undergoes minor changes to support and to exploit higher data rates. Let's review the protocol stack between the UE and the UTRAN. The physical layer is responsible for carrying the information over the air. The MAC layer controls how the physical layer resources, that is power and OVSF codes, are used. OVSF stands for Orthogonal Variable Spreading Factor. The radio link control layer increases the reliability through retransmission of lost packets. The radio resource control layer is considered to be the master of the UTRAN since it controls how all the lower layers operate. The RRC configures the parameters of the physical, MAC, and RLC layers. Let's see how the protocol stack between the UE and the UTRAN is modified to support HSDPA. The physical layer is significantly changed so that it can support new channels which can provide superior data rates. The MAC layer is also modified as the new HSDPA channels are introduced. The RRC layer is modified to manage the configuration of new HSDPA channels. Let's investigate the role of Node B in supporting HSDPA. The primary function of the Node B in a UMTS Release 99 system is to carry out physical layer processing such as channel coding, modulation, and spreading. The Node B does not need to make decisions such as data rate assignment since it receives such instructions from the RNC. The picture changes entirely in the case of an HSDPA Node B. The node B in an HSDPA system has to perform numerous intelligent and computationally intensive tasks. In addition to the physical layer operations, 
The node B now makes decisions such as user scheduling and the selection of data rates through the choice of packet size and modulation scheme. The node B controls the resources such as power and codes dynamically. Here is the summary of the impact of HSDPA on node B. Since higher data rates are supported, a significant amount of buffer capacity and backhaul capacity are required. A new baseband chipset that does the physical layer processing to support new HSDPA physical channels is required. Since scheduling is now done at the node B, associated software changes are also required. Node B is the most affected element in the evolution from Release 99 to HSDPA. Compared to the Node B, the RNC requires fewer changes, most of which are software changes. As mentioned for Node B, higher backhaul capacity and buffer capacity are required. In addition, higher link capacity between the SGSN, or serving GPRS support node, and the RNC is also required. While scheduling is moved to the node B, the RNC needs to take care of the configuration of new HSDPA channels. The UE undergoes numerous changes to support HSDPA. Both hardware and software changes are required. A new baseband chipset is required to process new HSDPA channels. Higher processing power and buffer capacity are necessary to support high data rates. Depending upon the capabilities of the UE, several categories of UE are defined. There are 12 categories of UE based on the physical layer capabilities. Category 10 is the most capable UE, and it is the only category that can support a 14 megabits per second data rate. Category 11 is the least capable UE, and it can support a peak data rate of only 0.9 megabits per second. Categories 11 and 12 can support only the QPSK modulation scheme, while all other categories can support both QPSK and 16 QAM modulation schemes.